we're going to create a weather app using a weather API from openweathermap.org. So this will just give you an idea of how to use an API uh, with, with a pretty simple interface. I've already created the user interface, or the UI for my app. So I'm here and I just used for the screen one, the dark theme. I didn't use the classic, so we, it looks a little bit different. So the name of the app is up here. I've got a label to enter the city that we want to get the weather from, a text box to enter it, uh, a button, say get the weather. This label here is going to be our output. I've just got the word test in there uh, so that we can see the label. And I've added this list view below so that we can get the output. So the output from the API is going to be a little strange. So just so that we can look at it and kind of decipher what's going on, I've added this as list view, which we can delete later. And then web one is the component. So over here under connectivity is where you would add that web, which allows you to use the API. So the API is an application programming interface. And what it really means is the ability to interact with other websites and get information from them and also send information to them. In this case, we just want to get the information, which is the weather uh, for our app. Okay, so what we're going to do next is go to blocks. Now that we've added all this in, and what I've got here is I've got one variable set up, which is my API key. And this API key I got by going to the openweathermap.org website. And let's shift over to there and I'll show you what that looks like. So you just need to sign up for an account. They will provide you with an API key for free. So if you go here um, to openweathermap.org and I've signed in. So you'd have to register and sign in. And then over here it says get an API key. Once you've generated an API key, you can just uh, copy that. And then back in App Inventor, you can just paste that into your API key. My recommendation is create a variable, call it API key, and then with a text block, copy and paste the API key from openweathermap.org in because you're going to need that for your API to work. Okay, so what's going to happen is the user is going to type in a, a city, click the button, and we're going to call the API and say, give us the weather for that city. So what we need is for button one, we're going to bring out a bit one button one dot click. And what we want to do is to set the um, URL for the web call. So the URL is, you know, what website do we want to go to and what, you know, what are we asking it for? Now back over here it, at openweathermap.org, you just click on API. It will take you here and we want current weather data. So you just go to the API doc. So for any API, there's going to be documentation provided that will tell you how, how to actually set this up. So in this case, uh, we're going to do this simple one, API openweathermap.org, and then we just want to be able to put in a city name and then the API key. So what we can do is copy this and then back in our URL here, we're going to paste this in. And notice that they don't have the HTTP, so we're going to fill that in as well. So in front of this API, we want to put in HTTPS, which is secure, and then colon, slash, slash. Note that over here, we've got this city name and app ID. We're going to split this out because we need to fill this stuff in depending on what city they choose. So I'm going to, from here, pull out a join. And this is going to go in the top part of the join. All right. And I'm going to need a space for the city as well as my API key. So I'm going to pull out two more of these. OK, so essentially what I want to do is let's grab everything after the equals. So, so what it does is here's the main URL, question mark, Q equals, 
So the query is that I want the city uh, and I need to provide them with my API key. So I'm going to take all this and I'm going to cut it and I'm going to pull out this and put it back in here just so we can keep track of what we need. All right, so the city name that we're going to input is really what the user types into the text box. So we're going to put that in for the second part of this. Text box text. So that's the city. I can take this out because I provided that. And now this will go into this third part. And again, the API key that we're going to put in is going to go in the next slot here. So I can erase this. And it's going to be my API key that I put in here. Now the one other thing that's useful is to tell it the unit of measurement. So like, do we want Fahrenheit? Do we want Celsius? I'm going to just put use Celsius. So this is going to be another, and this is in the API docs, but I can put it in here and units equal, whoop, units equal uh, metric. So that will give me uh, Celsius for temperature and the like. And then any parameters, what they call are that you are passing is just this ampersand and then whatever the parameter is and then what you're setting it to. So we're saying the units are metric, my app ID is my, my particular key. Okay, so once I've set up the URL, then I say, okay, get it, get me the information I'm asking for. So I go here and say web one get. So what's gonna happen, it's gonna jump out to the website from my app it's going to ask it this information, and then the API is going to return that information. And that's going to happen in the got text. So it's going to return a string of text. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to create another variable, and I'm just going to call this weather. And I'll initialize it to a blank string. When the API returns the information, I want to save it into my weather variable. So I'm going to say set weather to when you go out to a website. So for instance, let's do this. If I open a new window, bring this down here. Uh, what I can do is copy this and paste that in and say I'm going to get the weather for Boston and then we need to add units equals metric and app ID equals, and I'll copy my API key. And okay, so here's an example of what will be returned to you. So this is called JSON. So it's just a special format. Uh, it stands for JavaScript Object Notation. It's a lot of these brackets and colons and things, but it's returning all this information. So the coordinates of the latitude and longitude, you see here the weather is clouds with scattered clouds. We've got temperature 5.03, and that's in Celsius. So there's a lot of information. What we're going to do is just pull out the description of the weather and the temperature. And we'll say, OK, that's, that's what we want to pull out. So in order to do this, we need to be able to pull out this JSON. What we're going to do is in the web blocks, the web one blocks, we're going to do this JSON text decode with dictionaries. And the text is going to be the uh, response content, so what it's sending back to us. Now let's just start, let's just set the list view elements. So list view elements takes a list, and so the idea is that this is going to decode the JSON text with dictionaries. And dictionaries are just a list uh, with a bunch of key values. So uh, as we noticed with the response here, you get a key and then the value. So like main is clouds, description is scattered clouds. So it's, it's a bunch of these, what we're calling key values in a dictionary. So what we're going to do is try to extract the information from the API into a dictionary and then hopefully we can pull that out. 
So a lot of this is just trying to, you know, figure out what you're getting back and how you can parse it or extract it. I'll delete that. But let's just see what that looks like. So let's go to weather is what we're going to pull out. So we're just going to set the response and put it in our list view. And let's try running this and see what happens. So I'm going to connect the emulator. So you can see this. I'm going to put in Boston, get weather. Okay, so notice that we've now got some information back. And so what it's doing is it's pulling out each of our pieces of information. And I can't, let's see if I can go down here. No, it's not letting me. Scrollable. I want to be able to scroll down to see what's here. Okay, so let's try again. Okay, so let's close this and see. What we want is this main section, so let me, there we go. Okay, so in the main section, we're going to pull out the temperature and down here in weather, broken clouds. It's interesting, it's changing by the moment. We can see now that we're getting these and each of these is our key and our value. So notice that with main, we've got main, but then within that is another set. So we're going to have to kind of do a two-step here. Let's go back to our blocks. Okay, so the first thing is the key here is weather, and then it's giving us a list. And inside the list is another dictionary. And then in that dictionary, we're going to look for description. So it's a little convoluted, but because of the way this is set up, we can kind of tell this is a list and this is a list. So let's start with that. So we're going to do set label to text. Okay, and what we're going to do is grab a join, add a text box and type in current weather is, and so what we're going to do is first do get the value for the key. The key is going to be weather. The dictionary that we're getting it from is weather, our weather variable. So remember, we, we put all the response content in there. And we're looking for the key weather. And if it's not found, we'll just leave this as not found. And then that key, remember, is going to give us back a whole list. So what we want to do is we need to pull out the first item in the list. So this is going to be select list item. Get value for key will give us a list. And we want to do is pull out the first item in the list. And then what we're going to do is, looking at that again, that in itself is a dictionary with a bunch of keys and values. So description is the key, broken clouds is the value, icon key, 04n value. So we want to look for the key description. So we're going to pull in another get value for key. And this is going to be the dictionary. And the key will be description. And we're going to put that in there. Let's see how that goes. So I'm going to go back to my emulator. And let me put in uh, get weather again. Current weather is broken clouds. Great. So it pulled that information out for us. And I've still got this here. So this is just for us to refer to as we're trying to build this. And then the second thing I wanted to do is I wanted to go down to here and get the temperature, right? So main is going to be my first key. And then within that, it's going to give us a dictionary. So in this case, because we don't have the parentheses, it's not giving us a list, but it's going to give us the dictionary. Okay, so we're going to skip this select list item and we're going to do a get value for key inside a get value for key. So what I'm going to do here is add a couple more strings. Okay, so the first thing is I'm going to add in this backslash n. Backslash n just gives us a line feed, which means I'm going to 
go to the next line. So just to make it easier to read. And then uh, on the next one, I'm going to say current temperature is in a space. And then this is where I'm going to do, again, my uh, get value for key. Let's do it out here. So the first thing I'm going to do is main was that first key. And again, it's going to be pulling it out of weather. And then let's do another get value for key. So once I pull that out of main, that gives me a dictionary. And then the key that I want here is temp. That should do it. Let's try it again. So let's try a different city. Chicago. Get weather. Current weather is overcast clouds. Current temperature is 7.96. Okay, so we're able to pull that information out. And we could keep going and pull out other information, but we're going to say that's enough. Now, one thing is there's a certain way of putting things in here. So, for instance, if I do it the normal way that I'd normally put in Chicago, Illinois, with comma and then the state code, open weather map doesn't like that. So it gives us this, it's going to say not found. And then we've, we've gone ahead to try to pull things out of dictionaries when it's really giving us a string that says not found. So we're going to get a runtime error. So the one thing we want to do is to just add a test to make sure if they don't find the city, we want to just, we don't want to get an error code. We want to put in a message saying that they it didn't find it. So I'm only going to put this in if it's correct. If So what I want to say is if I get the value for key and it's not equal to not found. So if it's equal to not found, it's not found and I don't want to go any further. But if it's not equal to not found, that means that something's in there. We should be good to go. If that's the case, I can go ahead and pull everything out. Otherwise, let's just send a message saying I couldn't find that city. And I could say city not found. Okay, so now if I type this in, I should not get an error. City not found. With that, I've got a basic weather app that will give me some inform information. So if we were to go further with this, you know, we could put in all sorts of error checking here and formatting to make sure that the user puts this in exactly. We'd probably add the formatting ourselves. But just to give you the basic idea of how to put together a simple weather app using a weather API, we've done that. Now we don't need this list view anymore, so what I'm actually going to do is, if I just go back here, I can um, I can either delete it or I might want it. So I'll just turn it off so you can't see it. So when we go back to our, you know, now that's gone. So now if I put in Los Angeles, we get our weather and temperature and we don't have all this extra stuff down here. There's your basic weather app and you can certainly look into more of the API documentation and add a lot more to this weather app. So the key is I find is you're going to have to play around, see the formatting, and try to pull things out using a combination of, in this case, dictionaries and lists. It's not the easiest thing, but with perseverance, you can usually extract the information that you want. So good luck.